Hi, my name is AMU from Geek Empowered, and today I'm going to take you through something simple. So this week I started a new assignment with my students, and I felt like this was good enough to share with anybody and everybody who is learning a new skill or they want to work on a project that they can talk about in interviews, and that is creating a knowledge base. So whether you are going into marketing, whether you are going into tech, whether you're starting a business, whether you're onboarding a team, at some point in time, you're going to have to create a knowledge base so that way people can gain access to information that you need to share with them. So for my students, I had them pick a topic, literally any type of topic from music, video games, whatever it is, and create a knowledge base for it. So um, the point of creating a knowledge base is not necessarily about how much you know or or testing your knowledge on a certain topic, but it's more about how you curate information. How do you structure and curate information in a way that's presentable for the person who's consuming this information can easily understand a topic? So there was different routes that I took in order for my students to complete it. The first route that they could have chose was using Canva. So you can use a whiteboard or you can use their website template, you can use their presentation template, whatever template you feel comfortable with, and you can literally reuse some of this stuff to create um, a knowledge, uh, a knowledge, I was gonna say a knowledge board, a knowledge base. So for example, let's just pull this. We can get rid of all this stuff here. We can get rid of some of this stuff here and this stuff here and might as well get rid of this too. And we could just focus on this. And let's say my topic is, I was about to say cheese, but let me think of a better topic. Let me think of something better. Let's just talk about parenting. So parenting can be a topic. And then you could talk about um, before you give birth, dealing with babies, dealing with toddlers. And then you can keep going with this route, dealing with teenagers. Um, what, what else can you talk about? Money and kids. You could talk about um, school and kids. And then you could talk about how you never stop being a parent. It never ends. It never ends. Parenting adults. So those could be my subtopics. And then under those, I could give a, a quick description on what that subtopic is about. And then underneath, we could talk about more topics underneath that subtopic. So before you give birth, so understanding pregnancy. Uh, what else is another thing? I, I feel like I should know. I gave birth to five kids. So I'm like, okay, I should know way more. Um, choosing a hospital choosing a hospital, um, choosing baby names. Baby, there, oh wait, I'm like, why is my cursor? Okay, baby names. Uh, let's think of some important things. Um, picking a neighborhood to live in or to raise your child in. Picking daycares and schools. And you can just keep going as much as you want to. You can literally let it all out. And the thing is for these sub subtopics, what you can do is either look up resources and link these things to it. So let's, I'm gonna put under pregnancy. I forgot what I was even thinking when I was typing this out. I wish I could like rewind in real time dealing with pregnancy. I'll just put it, I'll put that. And then let's say, I don't feel like writing a bunch of stuff up about dealing with pregnancy. So we're going to go to Google. We go to Google and we see there's a bunch of information. Um, I want to get good, reputable information. So let's see. I want to pick something good too. Um, kidshealth.org is a good one. So let's just grab that. So we can grab this link. Let me just double check, double check. Everything's good there. I could just grab this link and literally put it right in my board. So like, let me grab that. And then I have to move myself to see if I can link it. <gasps> Why can't I link it? 
I have to link the whole thing. Hmm. There's better. Okay, there we go. Okay, I was about to say. I'm like, no. Okay, so the link pops up here. I was looking all the way up here to see where I can use the hyperlink and all of that. But it, so now when people see this, they could just click it. It'll take them to information. Or what I can do if I really want to be fancy with it, I can add another section, like those sections I deleted. And then I can talk about dealing with pregnancy in another subsection. So that's just one creative way to create a knowledge base. Another thing that I do did was use Google Sites. This one is the one I really, really love. And I really pushed for my students to do this, where you go to sites.google.com and you can create a free website using Google Sites. And in here, we created a like career knowledge base for people who do our workshops. Um, they can learn about different roles in tech. So I listed out all the different roles. And then for each role, I created a page where you can learn more about that role. So that way, if you know nothing about being a Scrum Master, I recommend some books. Here's some online courses. Here's some conferences. Here's some terms you need to know. Just some real good basic stuff that you can learn to be a Scrum Master. Another route that you could create a knowledge base, which is what we did in class, is you could use a Google spreadsheet. If you are good with Excel, if you are good with spreadsheets, show off those skills. <laughs> I am not great with Excel. Excel gives me a headache, but I realized what they have, they have templates. So I showed my students how to use the templates. You could just grab one of their templates. I can rename this. I'm going to put um, building a website because I know that pretty, pretty well. And then change out the title. And then I can do the same thing I did with Canva. I can start creating my different subtopics. So this might be uh, getting a domain name. Or, you know, before we even do that, we could talk about uh, why you need a website. If I can spell why you need a website. There we go. And then the next one can be getting a domain I'm typing way too much. I can just put domain name and hosting because I'm running out of room. And then, oh, that's bad. Mm -mm. Let me see if I can change it. Okay, there we go. So that could be getting a domain name and hosting. Um, this one could be picking your platform. And then after that, it could be creating a site map, creating a site map. Um, oh yeah, it, I could just copy and paste. So I, I can do that later. So let's say in here for picking your platform, I could put different types of platforms. And then in here, I could put WordPress, I could put Squarespace, I could put Wix, I could put um, Webflow. I was like, it was on the tip of my tongue and I'm like, I cannot forget the name of this thing. I could put Webflow and so on and so forth. And then in here, what I could do, let's say, okay, this is WordPress. I'm going to add another sheet and this sheet can be all about WordPress. And then I could do a couple of things here. I can either like free, free ball it and just like add all the different sections that I need. So for example, uh, what is WordPress? Could be one of my subtopics. And then I can have another one that says um, learning about WordPress themes. And then I can have another one that says uh, learning about, if I can spell, learning about WordPress plugins. And I could just keep going and going and going. And I could talk about the different things, like for example, for WordPress themes, I could then talk about um, drag and drop themes, drag and drop themes. I could talk about custom built themes. Oh no. See, this is, this is where I'm like the headache. Okay, learning about WordPress themes. Okay, and then building custom built themes. And then I could just keep going from there on and on and on. And then what I would do in here 
is I would link this to this tab. Don't ask me how to do it. I will have to Google it. It's embarrassing, I know. But you get my point. So these are the different ways that you can create a knowledge base. This is really helpful if you are applying for jobs and you want to talk about particular topics that you're familiar with. This will help retrain your brain on all the things that you know. Because sometimes we get really defeated and we feel like, oh, I don't know enough. Like, oh, I'm not good enough. Creating a knowledge base will help you refresh your memory and say, oh, no, actually, I know a ton of things. I may not know how to link certain things in Excel, but I know a lot about websites and I know a lot about online platforms. So uh, that's it about knowledge bases. If you need help with your online platforms, if you need a website, if you need someone to facilitate and host workshops around digital literacy and tech, feel free to hit me up. You can go to geekempowered.com. You can also comment you can also DM me. You can also email me at ehi at geekempowered.com.